So here again, this is our th uh, third step for problem solving, and we want to implement the chosen solution. The chosen solution being mass balance. Um, okay, so we're going to do the detailed steps of this. So in setting up a mass balance problem, follow the steps shown in text. So we have detailed steps just like this one uh, shown in the text. Just simply follow those steps. This is our step one where you define the domain over which to perform mass balance. So we are trying to define the boundaries over which we are doing mass balance. So this boundary is for room air. So on the bottom part is water from which um, chloroform comes into the room. So this is my boundary. So the domain, the inside part of this is domain and it's some fictitious boundary. It's, we choose to do a balance over the room because it makes sense. That's what would uh, give us room concentration. We can choose. Now, in step two, we set up the mass balance on chloroform. And so we have chloroform coming in and going out uh, with uh, generation. And so we put all this together in our equation that we have used a number of times in energy transport, for example. It's in minus out plus generation is equal to change in the amount stored. Notice that we are doing this balance on chloroform in air, not the entire air. So this is my species for which we are uh, doing the balance, uh, for which the balance is done. In step in step three, we have the in and out term. So these, these are going to be the important terms. For example, uh, the in term, let's say. So the in term is how much chloroform is there in the air coming in. That's in the concentration. That's in the concentration. And at what rate air is coming in. So this is the flow rate of air. Notice if you multiply together, then I get kilograms uh, per second. And then if I multiply by delta T, which is seconds, so that gives me kilograms. So the unit for this term is kilogram, and this is my in term. In exactly the same way is my out term. So stuff going out the amount chloroform going out is how much chloroform is there and remember in the room there is only one concentration and that's the concentration C. So C is the concentration and it's going out at the same flow rate as coming in. Uh, same meter cube per second. This has to happen. This is not explicitly said in the um, problem, but the amount of air coming out has to be equal to the amount of air coming in. Otherwise, either this room will explode or it will, or it will implode. Um, so uh, this is again in kilograms per second multiplied by the second is uh, kilograms and this is out so in minus out um, that's all we wanted to do here now in step four we want to do just the generation term so the generation term stuff is getting from uh, chloroform from the water from the water into air right there and then getting into the bulk air. So first it gets to the surface air and then to bulk air. Um, and how much is that? 
notice that this is just like um, convex convection problem that we did for heat transfer, which was H A T surface minus T infinity. And so in exactly the same way, we have a mass transfer coefficient whose unit happens to be meters per second. These are going to be covered in detail uh, later in this class. And the, uh, there's an area, and instead of a surface temperature, we have a surface concentration. But this surface concentration is in air, not water. So we need to know how much chloroform is there in the air right next to the surface. Right here is the CS. And then C is the bulk concentration. C is the concentration. So HM times A times CS minus C gives me the amount of chloroform that is coming from water into the air so that is like a generation term. It's as if like chloroform is being generated in this space. It's not really being generated. It's coming from water. But for, for the air, it's, it's just like a source term. And again, check the units. So this meter square and meter make meter cube that cancels with this. So that gives kilograms per second and then this part has a unit of second, so that again is kilogram. Now, for the last uh, term, step five uh, talks about the change in storage. Uh, that's the right hand side term. So, you notice what is the meaning of change in storage? So, because of air coming in and air going out, some chloroform coming in from here, there's going to be change in the amount of chloroform in there. And, and so that is a change of storage. And so how do we get this change of storage? First is there will be change in concentration. So delta C is like C final minus C initial between any two two times let's say it's it's actually this is the concentration change over time delta t so delta c is the concentration change over time delta t so it's final minus initial that's the change in concentration kilograms per meter cube so how much is the total change in uh, chloroform that uh, we need to multiply this by the volume. So this is the volume of room. And so that has a unit meter cube. So these two cancel. So you notice this kilogram is same as the unit for the other terms. And uh, so delta C again is the change in concentration over time delta T. Now, this is a step that I have added, and I find it very useful to verify the appropriate sign before every term. So remember, our balance is in minus out plus generation equal to change in storage. So in is this quantity here. And so that has a positive sign because it's it's coming in. Then out, the you know the, the actual quantity kilograms per meter cube and meter cube per second that is certainly a positive thing. So that is going out. So out should have a negative sign before that. And this is the troubling one. I want you to see that C S is the surface concentration. And then C, uh, C is the, uh, the bulk or room concentration. Okay, so as far as the room is concerned, it's going from surface to room. So for the room, then it's a positive quantity. It's a quantity that is coming to the room, from surface to the room. So then this 
would be a positive generation term. So that's why we have a positive generation term. Note that I never talked about whether CS is higher than C or lower. That's not the point. The point is if we write surface minus bulk, then it's going from surface to bulk. And so if I'm doing a balance on the bulk, for the bulk, it is just appearing. So it's just like a source term. And then change in storage again is this delta C, the meaning of it is final minus initial. So um, over this time period, over, over this uh, time, over delta T. And so again, that is a change in concentration and uh, that multiplied by uh, the, the volume that is a positive quantity, so this, this is fine. It, this step seven, we actually have already done this, verifying unit for each term. So we can skip, this is kilograms per second times uh, second, each term is kilograms, each term is in kilograms, but you should, um, for each problem, you should verify this, otherwise this gives us unnecessary problems. So now we are in step eight and we are want to solve the resulting equation. So this has been our resulting equation. And if I make delta T go to zero, then that gives us the differential equation. Now this differential equation has many terms like this. They are constant, they are constant but they are um, kind of clumsy to work with. So I will say, I will call B as this term here, this entire term I'll call B, and likewise this one I will call A. So this A and B are constant, okay? So now it looks a little more decent, bc dt equal to a minus bc, um, um, where the b and the a are given like that. And so the integration of that is of course very simple. Um, as you integrate uh, uh, a minus bc um, over c, we get this natural log with a minus one over B in the front because we have the uh, A minus B, C there. And so at the two limits, at the lower limits and upper limits, if you substitute them, then you get natural log of A minus B, C. Um, so so let, me, uh, let me do that. Uh, so we get natural log of A minus B, C minus natural log of a minus B C I and if I multiply the minus uh, B to the other side then I get minus B T. So now these two of course can be uh, written this way and so from there I can write A minus B C over A minus B C I is equal to A E raised to minus B T which can be rewritten as this. So this is my solution. Notice concentration as a function of time, which is what we had hoped to do. If I plot that concentration versus time, so this is my C, this is my time, then it's an exponential. So it starts from a value and then it goes down to some steady state. So what is my steady state value? If you look at the solution and you plug in t goes to infinity, then you get c equal to a over b. That's my steady state value. So in this one, it's a little bit of a design problem. So we already know that at steady state, the concentration is C equal to, uh, is given by C equal to A over B, where A and B are those uh, terms. Uh, but what volumetric flow rate is needed at steady state? 
to keep concentration at a certain value. So the concentration itself is given. We want, we need to find what should be the volumetric flow rate. So if we equate these two here and then plug in everything other than V dot, we get V dot is equal to this. So this is a flow rate uh, to keep to keep chloroform uh, below certain value, below desired value. 